Okay, we're on the last day of the week. We're still in the book of Proverbs, and we haven't finished Proverbs by any means, but we'll probably take a break and come back to Proverbs some point later. But today, we're on chapter 5. So, chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, we're all talking about wisdom. And then, boom, in the middle of Proverbs, here comes chapter 5, and it's on the moral woman. How did that get here? I thought Proverbs was all about wisdom. Yep, well, God knew that we needed a foundation for wisdom if we were going to be able to escape the lure and the trap of the devil. Because what? It is so enticing, and it's so easy to get trapped. So, what does chapter 5 say about the immoral woman? Let's buckle up because we're going to drive straight through this. Okay, first thing it says is that the immoral woman's lips drip like honey. Well, that's a mental picture. They drip like honey. They're so sweet. Everything she says is everything you want to hear. Well, isn't that nice? That's wonderful when somebody just tells us everything we want to hear and we feel so great. Yeah? And then it says her mouth is smoother than oil. Well, some people, they have such a way with words, and they're so cunning, and they're so smooth talkers. You know what? It makes it so easy for us to believe everything they say. But you know what it says? The end of all of that is bitter wormwood. And it says it's a, it's a two-edged sword. What does that mean? It sounds so smooth and beautiful and sweet and seductive. But you know what? It's going to stab you in the back. It's going to stab you in the back. Or it's going to cut your heart out. It is two-edged. It is not going to be healing. It is not going to be life-giving. It is a trap. Okay, let's keep going. It says, her feet go down into death. Her feet go down into hell, it even says. Well, what does that say? It says, she's already chosen a path for her life that ends badly. It ends with death and hell. Do you want to go down that path? We don't want to go down that path, but we don't see the end of the path. Okay, why? Because of the smooth, sweet talking words, that we don't focus on the end of the, the path where it ends in destruction. We're, we're so easily convinced, and you know, you know people who can just tie you around their little finger with their words, and that's how this immoral woman is. It says her ways are unstable. Unstable. You cannot trust her. Her ways are unstable. And so wisdom says, listen to me. And Solomon is trying to speak wisdom to his son. He says, listen to me. Don't even go near her house. Don't even go near it. You know, another place in the Bible, it says, avoid the very appearance of evil. Solomon is saying that. Don't even go near her house. If you don't go near her house, you're not going to go near her, right? You can avoid the whole thing. Why? If you go near her house, it ends bad for you. You're going to lose it all. And if you keep reading through those verses, it tells everything you lose. Obviously, you lose your good name, you lose your standing in the community, you lose your possessions, you lose it all. Then we get to verse 11, 12, and 13. So finally, when it's too late, okay, you've already lost it all, you went down to her house, you believed her words, you went to her house. Finally, when it's too late, you're feeling stuck. It's like being in quicksand. Okay, quicksand means... It's like the sinking, sticky sand. I don't know if everybody knows what quicksand is. But anyway, the more you try to get out, the deeper it sucks you down. Okay? That's what happens when you go to the house of the immoral woman. It's like quicksand. You get stuck. And then you cry out, you know, how I have hated instruction and how my heart despised correction. We didn't want to be instructed. We didn't want to be corrected. You know what? People were around you saying, don't do this. This isn't a good idea. Oh, don't do that. It's, it's not going to end well. Oh, they don't really mean what they're saying. But you know what? In that moment, we don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear it. And that's how we get deeper and deeper into quicksand. And it's harder and harder to get out. I have not obeyed the voice of my teachers and I have not inclined my ears to their instructions. So we talked about inclining your ears yesterday. I mean, you know, just to slow down, to pause, to listen. And you know what? God always places people in our lives around us who have done life longer than us, who have more wisdom. And maybe that's a parent, or maybe it's a teacher, or maybe it's your pastor. But there are people who are trying to warn you to keep you safe. They're saying, hey, the road is out. Don't go on. You know, you're going to fall off a cliff. Or there's ice on the road, drive slowly. But if we refuse to listen and we just insist on doing things our own way, verse 23, what does it say? He shall die for lack of instruction. 
Not because instruction isn't there, but because he doesn't take it, because he doesn't listen. He hates instruction. He will die for lack of instruction. It says in the greatness of his folly, he'll be led astray. And I just want to say, it is not just men who can be led astray by the immoral woman. There are so many women who are led astray by the immoral man. There are plenty of men whose lips drip like honey and who are smooth talkers and who have an agenda that will make your life end in death. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. So going the second mile, we don't even want to go near their house. You know what? I'm going to say, be like Joseph. If you have to run the other way and leave your coat behind, run the other way. But you know what? God wants your life to be everything he created you to be. So don't get trapped. All the wisdom that we've learned was so that we could have the foundation for this to not be trapped. Avoid the very appearance of evil and run away from everything that leads to death.